Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord our God is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment. Most merciful God, I confess that I have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what I have done and by what I have left undone. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved my neighbor as myself. I am truly sorry and I humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on me and forgive me that I may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. So together with joyful hearts, let us proclaim the Gloria in Excelsis. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whose glory we celebrate the anniversary of the founding of this church, we give you thanks for the lives of those who have worshipped in this house of prayer over the years, and we pray that all who seek you here may continue to find you through the Apostles' doctrine, fellowship, the breaking of the bread and prayer, be filled with your joy and peace and go forth to serve you in the, least, in the least, the lost, and the lonely, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 24, <coughs> beginning at verse 1. Wisdom sings her own praises. For her own people, she proclaims her glory. In the assembly of the Most High, she opens her mouth. In the presence of his people, she declares her word. From the mouth of the Most High I came forth, and the mistake covered the earth. In the highest heavens did I dwell, my throne on a pillar of love. The vault of the heaven I could pass alone. Through the deep abyss I wandered. Our waves of the sea, over the waves of the sea, over all the land, 
over every people and nation I held sway. Among all these, I sought a resting place in whose inheritance should I abide. Then the creator of all gave me his plan and he formed to use this path for my tent, saying, In Jacob, make your dwelling. In Israel, your inheritance. Before all ages, in the beginning, he created me. And through all ages, I shall not cease to be. In the holy tent, I ministered before him. And in Zion, I fixed my abode. Thus, in the chosen city, he has given me rest. In Jerusalem, is my domain. I have struck root among the the reading. Please stand for the responsorial psalm. <coughs> this is Psalm 45. Psalm 45. My heart overflows with a good theme. I address my verses to the king. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. You are fairer than the sons of men. Grace is poured upon your lips. Therefore, God has blessed you forever. Gird your sword on your thigh, O mighty one, in your splendor and your majesty. And in your majesty, ride on victoriously for the cause of truth and meekness and righteousness. Let your right hand teach you awesome things. Your arrows are sharp. The peoples fall under you. Your arrows are in the heart of the king's enemies. Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of uprightness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness <coughs> and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of joy above your fellows. All your garments are fragrant with myrrh and aloes and cassia out of ivory string instruments have made you glad. King's daughters are among your noble ladies. At your right hand stands the queen in gold from opera. Listen, O daughter, give attention and incline your ear. Forget your people and your father's house. Then the king will desire your beauty because he is your lord. Bow down to him. The daughter of Tyre will come with a gift the rich among the people will seek your favor. The king's daughter is all glorious within. Her clothing <clears throat> is interwoven with gold. She will be led to the king in embroidered work. The virgins, her companions, follow her. We will be brought to you. They will be led forth with gladness and rejoicing. They will enter into the king's palace. In place of your fathers will be your sons. You shall make them princes in all the earth. I will cause your name to be remembered in all generations. Therefore, the peoples will give you thanks forever and ever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please be seated. <coughs> A proclamation of the Word of God from the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ to St. John chapter 11, beginning at verse 14. The second woe is past. Behold, the third woe is coming quickly. Then the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven, saying, the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and, his, of, and of his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever. And the 24 elders who sit on their thrones before God fell on their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give you thanks, O Lord God, the Almighty, who are and who were, because 
you have taken your great power and have gone to reign. And the nations were enraged, and your wrath came, and the time came for the dead to be judged, and the time to reward your bond servants, the prophets, and the saints, and those who fear your name, the small and the great, and to destroy those who destroy the earth. And the temple of God, which is in heaven, was opened. And the ark of his covenant appeared in his temple. And there were flashes of lightning and sounds and peals of thunder and an earthquake and a great hail storm. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Lord be upon our mind, our lips, and our hearts as we hear his holy gospel. The holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke chapter 11. Glory to you, Lord Christ. We'll be reading from verse 27. <clears throat> While Jesus was saying these things, one of the women in the crowd raised her voice and said to him, Blessed is the womb that bore you and the breasts at which you nursed. But he said, On the contrary, blessed are those who hear the word of God and observe it. As the crowds were increasing, he began to say, this generation is a wicked generation. It seeks for a sign, and yet no sign will be given to it but the sign of Jonah. For just as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, so will the Son of Man be to this generation. The Queen of the South will rise up to the men of this generation at the judgment and condemn them, because... She came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, something greater than Solomon is here. The men of Nineveh will stand up with this generation, and the judgment will condemn it. <clears throat> because they repented and the preaching of the, at the preaching of Jonah. And behold, something greater than Jonah is here. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it away in a cellar, nor under a basket, but on the lampstand, so that those who enter may see the light. The eye of the lamp of your body, when your eye is clear, your whole body also is full of light. But when it is bad, your body also is full of darkness. Then watch out that the light in you is not darkness. If therefore your whole body is full of light with no dark parts in it, it will be wholly illumined, as when the lamp illumines you with its rays. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> Please be seated. So as we reflect this morning, it, Jesus said that either your eye is good or your eye is bad. So for the good eye, everything you see is good. And for the bad eye, everything you see is bad. In short, we project what we see inside of us. You know? If we are full of hatred, if we are full of jealousy, then what we see around us is hatred and jealousy. That's why, siguro para tayong si Bartimaeus, we need to be healed and for, from our blindness and see the goodness, the Spirit of God within us and see the goodness all around us. And also, Jesus uh, shared with us the sign of Jonah that 
It's the sign that will be given to this generation. So, continuing or connecting the good eye with the bad eye in the story of Jonah, we all go through the Jonah experience. All of us have a experience like Jonah. And it's important that when we experience the pattern or the life of Jonah in our lives, it's important that we have a good eye so we can be empowered and transformed by that experience of Jonah instead of uh, being bitter in our lives. As I will quote Thomas Merton regarding the sign of Jonah, he says that even our mistakes can be eloquent. You know, we have eloquent mistakes if we have a good eye. You know, that's why pag tayo ay nasa belly of the fish as Jonah. And in analogy, when you're in the belly, for example, if you're in, a, you're a food, Pag nasa belly ka, pag nasa stomach ka, ano bang nangyayari sa kinain natin? We are being digested. No? The reason why we are being digested in the belly of the fish, in the belly of whatever situation we are, is that after being digested, you know, we can give nutrients. We can give energy. Di ba ganun ang nangyayari? Every time we digest a food, it is transformed. After it's being transformed from its original state, it, be, it gives forth life. So, ganun tayo sa belly ng buhay. We are being transformed and digested for the reason that we can give life to other people and to those around us. So pag sinabi natin we are in the belly of the way like Jonah, as Jesus said, you know, we, are, we face events that we cannot control. We face events that we, cannot, we don't have any answers. When we face events that we don't have immediate conclusion. When we face events, when we cannot immediately fix or there's no fix, we cannot understand or we cannot find any meaning, it means with a good eye, it means that we're in the process of being transformed and growing in our lives. Why? Because we cannot help God and we cannot help God to transform us. God is the one who transforms us, and we cannot transform ourselves. Okay? So, as uh, Sonin Kierkegaard, I'll quote from his uh, writings, he says, it's a life of faith. He says that life must be lived forward, but it can be but it can only be understood backward. Life can, we live, can be lived forward, but we can only understood it in hindsight or backward. That's what we call faith. So in the belly of the fish, that's where we grow in faith. That's where we mature in our faith. And it's all about grace. It is when we realize that it is not by our own doing and in spite of us, God vomits us, brings us to the place that he wants for us, just like Jonah. That pl a plan that we did not plan, a place that we did not expect, and God, it's all grace. He brings us, he vomits us out to the place where we should be. A place where we should be and a transformed Jonah. So, it's important that we begin to recognize God in situations. 
in places where we never suspect God to be. You know, God is in the bizarre, God is in the abnormal, God is in the strange, peculiar, or odd, or offbeat situations of our life. In the outside, it, may, it might be <laughs> not what we want. But as Jesus says, with a good eye, we can see God even there. So, sabi nga sa team natin for 2024, enlarging our borders. If we are to enlarge our borders, we have to accept the destruction, the removal of the borders that we have set sa ating buhay. Diba? If we are to go beyond the borders, that's our theme for the year. So God may be doing something personally in our lives, in our ministry, in our church that He's removing the borders in a way that we don't expect. And parang si Bartimaeus last Sunday, most of the time we hang on to the robe, to the tattered robe, to our comfortable, peaceful border. And we cannot go beyond that border if we hang on to that robe. Like Bartimaeus, then we have to let go of those things in our lives. And that's when we begin to receive the mercy of God. And our eyes began to open that, you know, we are the ones enclosing ourselves. There's a border that we have set. Illus illusionary borders that we have set in our lives. So... Let's be encouraged by what Christ says that, you know, let's have a good eye and see God in everything and move beyond the borders that we have hung on to for a long time. Let them go and this will cause us to see even better in our lives. Please stand. Together now the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty Father, we lift before you your holy Catholic Church. That you would lead us in truth, baptize us in love, and unite us in spirit. We pray for her leaders, especially Bishop Craig and Bishop Ariel. That they may with one voice minister your life to your people and the world. We lift before you the people of this community, this nation, and the world. That we may honor one another and serve the common good. We pray for our governmental leaders, especially President Marcos. That you would lead them in the way of justice and peace. We lift before you all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. That you would send your comfort and grace upon them. We lift before you, Lord, Gloria, Tess, Charmaine, Grace, Mitch, Kenneth, Malia Loreto, Fur, Virgili, Carrie, 
Christine Ann and Lucas, Edith, Light, Nelia, Maricel, Jose, Sherwin, Alan, Cipriano, Thea, Katrina, Peachy, Zakendrick, Margie, Kenneth, Frian, Elijah, and Wise. Give to the departed eternal rest. Grant that we may share with them in your everlasting kingdom. Together, the corporate petition. Almighty God and King, our dwelling place in all generations, owner of the earth and all it contains, grant unto us our allotted inheritance, we pray, and the grace to build upon it facilities in which your people, being restored in your image and ever growing in love for you, might become a habitation of your presence and ministers of your life to the glory of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns together with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Grant unto your church, O merciful God, the perseverance of our forefathers, that we may build upon their labors to the glory of your name. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. In your spirit. Now let us share the peace of Christ with our brothers and sisters. Peace be with you. Peace. So this morning, God has, God has blessed us with many things in our life, whether we recognize it or not. So with that thought in our hearts and with joyful hearts, let us offer to God our praise and our thanks. Together, the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become the body of Christ. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness. We have received the wine we offer you, 
fruit of divine and work of human hands, it will become the blood of Christ. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we bring these offerings before you. They will be used in your church for the work you have set before us and the furthering of your kingdom. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of this day, for our good and the good of all this holy church. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. With love, we celebrate his death. With living faith, we proclaim his resurrection. With unwavering hope, we await his return in glory. Now with the saints and all the angels, we praise you forever as we say, Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We for the goodness and love that you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Remember your servants, Craig, our patriarch, our our bishop, all the clergy and all your faithful people. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of salvation. By him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, 
now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Hallelujah! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah! Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word in my soul. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Jesus died for you. And feed on him in your hearts with thanksgiving. I see you, my Lord and my God. in the blood of Christ the body 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 in the blood of Christ We give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, you who are and were and are to come. You alone have taken your great power, and over this world you have come to As you
God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send, Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and with your loved ones now and forever. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Amen.